What's going on, everybody? Poem here with Late Night Gaming, and I'm here to uh, show you my Mono Boba deck. Um, this is a, a deck tech uh, video. I'm going to kind of go through a couple things. I'm going to talk a little bit about the deck construction. I will discuss mulligan strategies, uh, sideboard considerations, piloting decisions, and um, some ways to counter this deck. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we are uh, working on a series right now. We're going to be discussing the six best decks in the uh, current Spark of Rebellion meta, and we have identified this deck. Um, there's my uh, voice activation. Um, so we've identified uh, this deck as being one of the six best decks in the current game. Um, so kind of going through the list here, you've got early drops, you've got uh, uh, Greedo, uh, a, you've got Tile and Fighter, make Greedo go away first, Tile, tile LN Fighter, Tile LN Fighter, there he goes. Um, Cartel Spacer, Cartel Spacer, Crafty Smuggler, And last but not least, Viper Probe Droid. Now, depending on your matchup, you're going to be looking for certain units. So, for example, if you're going up against a deck that runs um, the Sabine unit, a card like Viper Probe Droid is going to be much better than, um, let's say, Crafty Smuggler. Um, especially if your opponent is going first. If you play the, if your opponent plays the Sabine unit and you have to play the Crafty Smuggler into that, they're going to be able to ping the shield off of the Crafty Smuggler with Sabine's on attack ability. And then they are going to be able to kill your Crafty Smuggler, keeping Sabine alive, and you are probably going to lose that game. Um, especially if this is an aggro mirror, something like that, um, it's going to be very difficult to come back from that. Um, early game um, tempo, things like that, are very, very important. Um, they cannot be, you know, you cannot miss, you know, and, and expect um, nothing, you know, you should expect a difficult match if you uh, lose those early game trades. Another unit that gets blown out like that would be Greedo. Um, Greedo gets pinged by the Sabine unit um, before Greedo can deal the damage uh, in return. So he basically just gets obliterated by the Sabine unit. Um, so you just these are things to consider. Um, you're really looking for a Viper Probe Droid in that care, in scenario. Uh, the other card, the other thing that can occur is <clears throat> if they go first and you only have a Cartel Spacer and they play a a, a, an A-Wing, um, you're going to be in trouble as well because they play the A-Wing, you play Cartel, they can then attack your Cartel Spacer with their A-Wing. Green Squadron A-Wing. And if that occurs, then again, the A-Wing can deal three to your Cartel. The A-Wing only takes two back. Now they have an A-Wing on the board and you have to invest further resources, um, cards, etc. to deal with that A-Wing. It's just going to beat you up and you're, again, probably going to lose the game. So again, you know, this deck really, really wants to win initiative. It wants to go first. Um, if it does, then it can play something like a shoot first, for example. Shoot first. Shoot first. Finicky voice activation. Um, 
if you go first and you're able to play this card and again get that early game trade that's favorable to you that's all the better so when it comes to like a mulligan you need to understand what is happening you know as far as this these early game interactions and you need to try to keep um, units that allow you to prevent yourself from getting blown out in those situations so for example if you'll know during the roll off whether you're going first or not and that should dictate whether you need to mulligan even if you have let's say a cartel spacer and you are going second you need to mulligan into a, a deck a red hero deck for example you need to try to find a viper probe droid things like that um, having multiple options when going second allows you to um, kind of dodge you know either dodge arenas I know that sounds weird in an aggro situation like against an aggro deck to dodge the arena like that but you know sometimes you do need to dodge in order to like prevent that bad like early game trade from occurring um, going through the rest of the deck here um, first thing I will say is I built this deck with the two Boba Fett disintegrators and I think I regret that. I mean, let's be honest. Um, I've, I've played this in an online tournament, multiple online tournaments, and I think I was just a little scared of the aggro kicking my butt. And so I had, um, I opted for three cell block guard and um, cell block guard in order to stabilize. Um, I feel that I'm better into a mid game against an aggro deck. Um, but I think that certain interactions can occur with Boba that make you, you know, really need to run through this guy. So he's able to kill somebody and because of his high stats, he can stick around to then deal damage to their base to help you with your win condition. His on attack ability is also very relevant. Disintegrator. Um, his ability to um, do that extra three damage can kill a help you kill a Leia, um, can help you kill a Sabine. Um, so he is a real threat. I know you can't ambush him in this version. You don't have ECL, but he's still a quality unit, and I think I regret the two of. Um, so maybe consider, or yeah, I would probably <laughs> make a quick change and maybe put him as a three of. Um, okay, some other, just, you know, kind of going through here, just we'll look at some more units here. Um, obviously, we talked a little bit about the cell block guard. I think that's a little bit of a, you know, it's, again, if you're scared of aggro, he can help you a little bit. He's not really, uh, he's not, he doesn't have great stats, but um, if you're finding yourself having a hard time against the Sabines and the Leas, um, you might want to consider the cell block guard. He can... He, he, you know, he fulfills a job. He, he does a thing that's good for you. He keeps, he keeps your important units alive. Sometimes you have a syndicate lackeys that just killed something, and then it has very low health remaining, maybe one health or something like that. And if you have a cell block guard kind of sitting there, that sentinel can kind of keep your lackeys alive for you to be able to hit the base. So I think. Um, and I will, I will say, as far as Syndicate Lackeys, um, you might consider running Bosk. I think, again, if you're facing aggro decks and that's what you're expecting to see, maybe at your local meta, people have a lot of Sabine because it's a cheap deck to make, um, you might consider running the Syndicate Lackeys over Bosk in that scenario because of its extra um, ping of damage allows you to, to one-shot the the Sabine leader, which is a relevant um, difference between Syndicate Lackeys and Bosk. So I kind of go back and forth. I I find that Bosk doesn't proc as much as I would like, um, and I just want that five-cost thing to come in and kill something. Um, so that's just my take. Um, you can kind of do some play testing and decide for yourself. Um, looking at some more of the deck here, obviously some normal, you know, you've got to have your 7th Fleet Defender, you know, everybody knows that card's amazing. 7th Fleet Defender, the the shielded on it, 7th Fleet Defender. 
yeah, so the the fact that it kind of just can two for one um, the A wings and um, Alliance X wings and things like that, uh, it's just a really quality unit. It does a lot for three resources for you. It's definitely a great card. It sticks on the board, kills something, and they can hit the base. It's kind of it's it's just it's going in every every mono boba deck. That thing is crazy. Um, a couple other cards you might um, not always you know put in every mono build the Gamorian guards I like the Gamorian guards I think obviously they lose to they just get completely obliterated by Bosk who comes in kills them one health left so it's maybe a matchup thing like if you're expecting like green boba or something the guards are just have a poor interaction with Bosk in particular so that's something to consider with those guys but again um stabilization is really what you're looking for here you want to be able to just kind of survive that early weenie rush from the aggro deck so that you can be the real mid game mid range um, option you want to you want to come in you want to control the aggro but then you want to flip the game and become the aggro deck so you just want some stabilization into your deck so that they can't just rush you down so the Gamorian guards do a thing that you want them to do they help just soak up damage and that four health is relevant because a lot of those guys in the aggro decks they hit for three unless they can get a metal ceremony down or something like that they have to hit your guy you have to hit two of your guys into your guards so again that two for one is definitely happening um, so I recommend that card another really deep cut weird include for me and again this is maybe teched against aggro is the AT, uh, Frontier ATRT. Um, this guy, he gives you ambush when you have another vehicle in play, which there's plenty of vehicles in the deck. Um, and so he, this guy comes in and does a really good thing for you. He comes in with ambush and he cleans up one of those little weenies that your aggro deck has put down in front of you um, on a four resource turn. So it's sort of like that five resource turn what that's doing for you but it's doing it for you on the four resource source turn it kills you kill a thing then you can you don't have to use your units that are currently in play to kill a thing you can hit their base with your units so you're just pushing damage you're controlling them with your units but you're pushing damage to the base with your units you know when that's why ambush is so good is because you're not having to use your current units in play to control their units you get to use units that are in your hand to control their units and then attack their base with your units. So you are controlling and doing aggro at the same time. And it puts them in a really weird spot sometimes where they they have to, the aggro deck has to start kind of trading into you to try to control what you're doing, even though you are sort of the control deck um, in that matchup. So again, um, I don't really need to talk about, you know, Cantina Bouncer and fire spray and cunning I mean uh, these are just great cards these are going in every mono deck I mean these are just auto includes right um, I like the I like the two surprise strike I'm, I like surprise strike but like you don't want to necessarily do that early on um, you want to stick units on the board for two resources that are going to attack for multiple rounds and do that damage the 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 it's like Getting that three damage is nice, but if you get it in the early game, you're you're just not getting enough value out of that. When you play a unit, if from a resource standpoint, you're getting that three damage every single round for that two resources of Viper Pro Droid or whatever, unless they control you. So in theory, like an event like Surprise Strike to me is is a is a late game finisher, and so you have to make a decision on whether that's a three of for you. And for me, a lot of times. Um, cards that I don't want to see early are two ofs and even though it's a tremendously good card um, you you know you have to consider like you need you know increasing your odds of having the cards that you want when you want them um, and surprise strike early is not what you want so it's just something to consider it's a personal decision I've made to go to but you know to each their own I think Waylay is another one. Um, Waylay, Waylay. 
you know, I have it at two of right now. Um, again, I like having options. I want options, but I don't want to be like flooded with events that I can't use because they're situational. So again, it's kind of a two of just because it's like a situational card. Um, it is nice to have like if, you know, turn two, you don't have any other three drop. You didn't draw your Boba, your Seventh Fleet Defender or your Cell Block card or something like that. And they play like an Ezra or something and you just bounce it. You just kind of time walk like you just move on to the next round. And that's usually good for you because like, you know, the later you can go in the game, like at least against aggro, you're happy with that. Um, other things to consider on this list, you've got a 30 health base. Um, that is that has won me games. I mean, that is it's a it's part of a tempo thing. The issue with the 25 health base Jetta City sometimes is that it requires an, uh, a target for it to it to proc. Um, preferably that target hits for four or five damage. Um, you know, if it hits for three, you're kind of like, you know, you're already you're not getting a whole lot of value out of the the base. And then, but the biggest thing for me is that it requires an action, and an action in this game can mean the difference between winning and losing. That's how close these these aggro matchups can be. And so I've been running the 30 health base. I'm happy with it. I think it works. And I recommend trying a 30 health base with this particular deck. Um, all right, so let's go to some of the other talking points. On the sideboard, um, Bodhi Rook is an option. I don't know the text on Bodhi Rook to be able to call him up. Um, but Bodhi Rook, um, he gives you some control over their events and things like that. So he might be good if you're expecting like Mono Boba or Aiden or things like that that like run, you know, takedown and barrage and whatever. Like he can he can get in there and he can clear those units out of there. He can grab a resupply if you go first on that second turn. And sometimes that is the only card that they had that they were counting on playing with their three resources. I can't tell you how many times I've grabbed resupplies out of green decks hands. And that is the only three drop that they had. And I, I have won every single one of those games because I got a Bodhi Rook. They got discarded a card and they did nothing else that turn. And the game ended like it's basically over. You know, when you get that much of an advantage that early in the game, it is it snowballs because you're doing three damage to the base with that Bodhi Rook every single round until they can kill him. And again, they have to spend resources to deal with him. And it's just, you know, you pretty much you pretty much win that game if you if you peel their only three cost option out of their hand. Um, so Bodhi is good and he's in the sideboard and he's worth a look for sure. Um, the other ones, the other interesting card there in the sideboard is the Swoop Racer. Swoop Racer. Swoop Racer. Okay. This guy I like because he hits for four. So again, he only costs three. So he's, he's, you know, he's got a lot of damage in that one little card. Okay. And so it's an interesting option if you're feeling like maybe against a control deck, he would be better than against an aggro deck. Um, he has a poor trade into two cost units. Like he can be killed by Sabines and Viper probes and stuff. But against a control deck, you just want to like stack damage potential on the board. You want to be able to like just get underneath their control. You want to be able to like push damage to their base and kill their base before they can stop you, before they can get their, you know, their real control engine online, get to their Vaders and their whatever they're trying to do to really shut you down. So like the swoop racer gets in there and he's allows you to just like put a big, a big damage unit for pretty cheap on the board. And again, just start stacking that damage onto the base to try to, get to your win condition. So I definitely recommend um, a swoop racer in the sideboard or a main deck depending on what you're expecting. A couple other things to consider here you've got um, I think we talked a little bit about mulli um, the mulligan we talked about piloting side sideboard 
Uh, the only thing to consider would be like um, how to what what if you're not playing mono boba but you're trying to counter them? What do you do? And that's a real tricky one. Um, this deck plays very well into the entire field of Star Wars Unlimited, with the exception of I would say one deck. I mean, there might be others that are a mad bad matchup that I have considered. I'm not trying to hate on your pet project, but um, a couple minutes. Um, but the deck that really beats it is the green boba. So the green boba beats it because it it gets boba fett down most likely earlier than you do, and so it does all you know it just is ahead okay and you can you know so so what that the way you the way that you might consider beating yellow boba if you're afraid of this deck is obviously to run a better version of boba let's say a better version but just the best per version which would be the green boba that's one option to counter this um thinking about other ways to counter it um it's a little tricky i think I think that the what you need to understand about this deck is that it's actually an aggro deck. So just treat it like an aggro deck. I would describe it as like a tempo deck. Like it's it's controlling you a little bit, but then it's trying to just like tempo to like actually kill your base. Um, so in it doesn't really have a late, late, late game type of power level. So if you're able to kind of control it you know if you can if you can get you know put a little wrapper around it you know with your control deck if you can kind of like stop the onslaught then you have a chance um, you know attack with your units early be cognizant you know keep cards that exhaust units or bounce units because they're one of the main strategies with this deck is to give the cunning use the cunning to give a unit plus four so if you have like Leia unit a no good to me dead um, uh, waylays. You just need to like hold these cards, f even potentially not even using them on curve, and so that you can use them at the perfect moment in order to thwart the attack for seven or eight. That can be the turning point in the game if you're able to stop that attack from occurring. So e exhausting, bouncing, things like that. Um, really going to help you in this to deal with this matchup understand that this is an aggro deck it's um more of a mid-rangey tempo-y type aggro deck but it is an aggro deck it is trying to kill your base as fast as possible and so the way that you deal with this is with a control wrapper understanding you know not getting blown out by the cunning things like that all right guys so we're going to be coming out with uh, some more best decks in star wars unlimited um, so stay tuned for some more of those, and I appreciate you guys watching, and if you made it this far, you are my hero.